Tell me about the dog. The dog is the best. He's the best puppy I've ever had. He's 11, but I still call him a puppy. He always wants to be with you. He wants to follow you. He wants his treats. He wants you to rub his belly. He wants to just be right on top of you. And he can be annoying when we're laying together and we're snuggling. And if I start to rub behind his ears or his belly, if I stop, he gets aggravated and then he comes over and he puts his nose under my arm and then he flicks his nose up, which makes my arm go up because he wants me to rub his belly still. And he's relentless. He'll do it over and over and over again. When he gets a little riled up, if we go near him and start to play with him and get a little rough, then he gets rough. And then in order to deal with that, or as you say, cope, he eventually has to take one of his toys and just starts flinging it back and forth in his mouth. And he always picks up this big, heavy pull toy that we call the ball of death. Because if he were to let go, it would definitely hurt somebody. But I think he does it just to annoy us and aggravate us and get us going. My favorite story is when he tried to jump over the table in the kitchen. You and your sister were sitting on one side of the table eating, and Pip and I were on the other side, but kind of down the hall from the kitchen, walking toward you guys. And he got excited and decided he was going to run and jump and try to be with you two. <laughs> so he ran. And it was so sad because he hit the table. He didn't make it over. <laughs> and I could still see it. And I could see your expression and Grace's expression in my head where you looked amused and scared and the poor baby hit and then fell back onto the floor. And we were worried. Now we can laugh. But um, he learned his lesson because he never did it again. There was this one time when I was playing baseball with Dad in the um, in the side yard, and Pippi was on the other side of the fence in the backyard, and he wanted to come play with us, I guess. So I remember I hit like a, a really, I hit the ball really far. I got like a home run, and I was gonna go run and do my thing, but Dad stopped me and said go go push your dog's head back under the fence and i turn around and i see pip's head coming out of the bottom of the fence looking at me and he had dug a hole to get to the other side and was trying to to get to us he wanted to be with you <laughs> sounds a little cheesy but he kind of saved me at one point because i made a big life decision to quit my full-time job and to be home as a mom when we were able to do that um, financially. And I had worked at the same nonprofit agency for 20 years. And it was great initially because it was right before summer. And then I got to spend summer with you guys. We did so much. And then the fall came and you guys went back to school. And... After a few weeks, I, I kind of fell apart because I felt as if part of my identity wasn't there anymore because I had worked at the agency for so long and knew so many people, families, co-workers, built programs from scratch. And I just, I, like I said, I fell apart. And I knew I wanted to go back to work part-time, but I didn't know what I wanted to do. And during that time when I was really low, he was always here with me and I don't know I just loved him being around me and feeling that unconditional love it was important that he was there for me and now I guess from that scenario <laughs> I talk to the dog all the time which you guys tease me about because I think of him as family he's the third child he's the baby even though he's old now. And if anything were to happen to him, I think I would probably be more upset 
about the loss of him than some of the people that I've lost in my life, which sounds kind of weird, but pets become family. And honestly, sometimes I'd rather be around animals and my pets than people because most people suck. I don't know if I could say that in this.